Hey folks, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this cobblestone style effect. This is something that you can't get through instancing. To get this tight packing, this is using a lot of the new nodes in 3.1, like merge by distance, dual mesh, scale elements, I'm going to control the packing, and then the Mesh Island node gives us an attribute that can be then used in the material to adjust those random colors. And this will work on any sort of geometry. So it's quite a versatile technique. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Start with the usual setup, cube, new network, delete the first node. Start with a grid. Just make that a little bit larger. Three by three and 20 by 20 vertices. Just going to turn on the wireframe so you can see what's happening with the mesh. First thing I want to do there is actually merge some of these points together. It's a really useful node. So I crank that up. Start seeing we're getting this very interesting triangulated style mesh. I'm going to put it on about 0.3 to start with. And we want to follow that with the dual mesh. So mesh, dual mesh. And you can see what that's done. It has basically turned all the vertices into a face. So you're getting this very organic looking layout here. Certainly wouldn't be able to get it any other way. And then what I want to do is split out each of these Engon faces. So I just want to grab the split edges. Doesn't look like anything's happened there. But if I then bring in the scale elements, and put that down, you can see what the split edges has done. Basically split up each face into its own separate mesh island. So now that we've got that there, it's just a matter of smoothing that out. So I'm just gonna use subdivision Subdivision surface, just on a level of one. And then I want to extrude that. So extrude mesh, bring that down. And I'm just going to come into EV mode here. the AO on and probably don't need to see that wireframe anymore. So you can see the start of that cobblestone look. Now it's just a matter of subdividing that again. So I'm just going to shift D duplicate. By default, the extrude is actually on individual, which kind of does give an interesting look, but not quite what I'm after this time. So 
And then I want to smooth that out. That's basically just got rid of the faceting. It's giving us some smooth shading. Now we've got that, we can start bringing in the color. So new node, got mesh, mesh island. What this does is creates an index for each island. So I'm not sure which order it's going to go in. So basically each one of these individual islands is going to have an index from zero to whatever the count is. So this gives the index and this gives the total number of islands. So by using both of them, we can get a value between zero and one to then drive a shader. So if you use map range, what we want out is 0 to 1. So if you use the index island in here, and then the island count into the from max. Because that's basically saying from 0 to how many there are there, let's say that there's 30. Remap 0 to 30 to 0 to 1. And then that result, we can put that into the group output node. So I generally like to change that name. I'm going to call that island. And now that shows up in the modifier properties here, island. Still need to give that an actual attribute name. I just tend to match them. Open up the shader editor. And so I'm just going to put the default material on. Just going to pin that and then use attribute up here and match that name island. Then that color can go into the base color. I think it's not doing anything yet because we need to apply a material to this Geometry Nose Network. Set material, put in the material, and you can start seeing something's happening there. And I probably should have done the factor. Doesn't really make any difference. But seeing that is a floating point, better off using the factor there. You can see the grey being converted by Blender to the yellow. Of course the yellow being a colour socket. And just run that through a colour ramp. You can see what's happening there. So don't be misled, that's not a gradient going across. It is giving a unique solid colour to each one of those mesh islands. Which you can see there if I kind of crunch that up. So most of the time you're probably going to want more of a random distribution of these colours. Actually a simple trick to do that. I'm going to grab the white noise and that result is going to go into the vector 
and the value into the island. Because that white noise is essentially just giving a random value between 0 and 1. And that vector is really acting as the random seed. And so as we're getting a different number in there per island, we're getting a different randomized value there. You can change these color knots to whatever you'd like. Let's say a red. to a pink, and maybe one knot in the middle, to an orange. Now we're going to change to something more interesting mesh-wise. Just so you know that this works on things that are other than a plane. Just going to put in good old monkey Drag that into the network and swap out the plane for the monkey and hide it. You're getting this very interesting effect. And as you can see, if you put that distance down, and then play with the scale elements. And that's going to shrink them in. So you're trying to get it to the point where they're touching, but not quite going all the way through. See, so it's not working so well around your eyes, because they are actually separate objects in that monkey. Try any other mesh in here and you'll see it generally does work. It kind of depends on the original distribution of the polygons. And then you can also play around with, for instance, you could put a noise into this. So you put noise texture into that extrude and then map that range, change that from 0.3 to 0.8 because that's generally the range of the noise texture. It doesn't go below 0.3 or above 0.8. And then we can just fiddle with that. It's going to give a little bit more randomization to that depending on how you have that scale. That's the end of the tutorial. Hopefully that was useful. Thanks for watching.